In 1948, Feynman published his PhD thesis titled Space-Time Approach to Quantum Mechanics, introducing an innovative approach to the subject. He provided us with an elegant formulation for the time evolution of a quantum particle using a set of ingenious mathematical techniques, blending together mathematical sophistication and physical insight to create the path integral formulation. His path integral formulation of quantum mechanics acts not just as a tool for intuitively understanding it, but also as a transformative gateway that paves the way for the bridge between classical and quantum mechanics. So, well, what is this formulation? To understand the formulation, let's explore the time evolution of a quantum particle. If a particle wants to go from point A to point B, we have to consider all the possible paths that it could take. Feynman formulated this as an integral. He split the space between the regions into infinitesimally small components and considered the different probabilities of the particles being at different places in each particular component. The time interval between measuring these values is given by t1, t2, t3, etc., where t of i plus 1 is t of i plus epsilon. What this essentially means is that we want to make the measurement intervals shorter and shorter and narrow the time evolution down to a single point in time to see what path the particle is choosing. Now remember, these are just probabilities. We don't have a path yet. However, from a classical point of view, the successive values x1, x2, x3, etc. each denote a different path of the object. And just in case you're wondering, this does indeed form all sorts of ridiculous paths between A and B. In this probabilistic description, we also do take into account if the particle, say, travels to the edge of the universe and comes back. But that is the beautiful thing about Feynman's path integral. We can consider all these seemingly violating all physical laws kind of paths and it would still give us a very actual physical result. Now you can probably see why the double slit experiment is just a special case of this description. In the double slit experiment, we just considered two paths that the particle could have taken. Thus, this formulation is also the equivalent of splitting a screen into infinitely many slits and then adding infinitely many such screens to account for all the possible paths. Coming back to our quantum paths, Feynman defines a probability amplitude phi of r that the particle takes a certain path through the space-time region r. Don't confuse the probability with the probability amplitude. The probability amplitude is a complex number given by this formula, where phi of x1, x2, x3, etc. is a function of the variables xi defining the path that returns a complex number. Taking the limit as epsilon goes to zero, we are essentially characterizing this function phi to depend on the entire path x of t instead of the discrete values at a particular time. Upon this idea, Feynman came up with two postulates. The first one states that the probability of the entire path can be figured out by summing the individual probabilities and squaring the sum, much like all of quantum mechanics. The second one states the following. The paths contribute equally in magnitude, but the phase of their contribution is the classical action, that is, the time integral of the Lagrangian taken along the path. But, well, what is this Lagrangian? To define it physically, the Lagrangian in classical mechanics is the difference of an object's kinetic energy and potential energy, and the time integral of this Lagrangian is the special quantity called the action. Now, well, what are these postulates trying to say? All the complex terms can be imagined in the complex plane as terms having the same magnitude but different directions. Now, how do we get the total probability of a particle taking a path from this? Well, summing over all these arrows is essentially the same as connecting each arrow from tip to tail and connecting the start and the end points gives us a remarkable result. All the crazy paths tend to cancel each other out, while the paths minimizing the action add up significantly to the probability. This gives us an elegant yet well-defined method of seeing what path the particle would take. Now, what happens if we take the classical limit of this path integral? Well, quantum mechanics is the more fundamental law, so it should be the case that taking the classical limit gives us the laws that govern the classical world. And indeed, that is what we see. If we had infinitely more contributing arrows, the resulting probability would get infinitely closer to the paths minimizing the action. For classical objects, this action quantity is vastly greater than h-bar, 
Thus, it's almost as if the arrow flips around the plane a bajillion times before landing in a spot. Even a small change in this path would lead to a completely different arrow. And these infinite randomly pointed arrows cancel each other out, and the ones minimizing the action add up. In the quantum world, these paths have an action comparable to H bar, thus it is not really necessary for the paths to cancel out, still leaving us with a slightly fuzzy range of possible paths that, well, at least don't include absolutely crazy paths. So it still maintains the fact that F is equal to MA is not really useful for quantum paths, however useful it may be for classical paths. You can now see why we call this the path of stationary action. Del S around this path is extremely close to zero. That is, this path tends to minimize the change in action, the stationary action path. Feynman's path integral approach allowed him to rederive the Schrodinger equations from scratch. And like the absolute chat that he was, he not only showed in this paper how his formulation reconciles with Schrodinger's differential equations and Heisenberg's matrix algebra, but how his formulation is more mathematically powerful than these earlier formulations of quantum mechanics. These traditional approaches to quantum mechanics, such as Schrodinger's equations and Hamiltonian formalism, provided powerful frameworks for understanding the behavior of particles at the quantum level. However, they often relied on abstract mathematical constructs, and, well, they were difficult to visualize. Feynman's path integral formulation offered a novel perspective rooted in intuitive classical concepts, providing a more tangible understanding of quantum processes. The principle of least action is fundamental to all of physics, and now we have seen how this emerges from the quantum world as well. Perhaps the true power of this formulation lies in producing a true quantum field theory. In QFT, we are interested in the interaction of particles through quantum fields. And just as the infinite possible quantum paths, there are an infinite amount of things that could happen to the interacting particles. Say a photon in an interaction briefly splits into a particle and an antiparticle pair. However, with the help of Feynman diagrams, the probabilities of these events can be roughly calculated. And although they don't neatly cancel out, increasingly complex situations contribute to a lesser and lesser probability, thus leaving us with a system where the simplest interaction is often the most probable one. In the words of Feynman himself, nature isn't classical, dammit, and if you want to make a simulation of nature, you'd better make it quantum mechanical, and by golly, it's a wonderful problem, because it doesn't look so easy. Through his path integral formulation, Feynman provided us with a powerful tool to tackle this wonderful problem, inviting us to explore the quantum world with renewed curiosity and awe.